Welcome to Home Groups. Today, Pastor John Carter is going to teach us about the dangers of distractions. We can't deny the fact that we live in a world full of distractions. It seems like it's getting harder and harder to give our full attention to anything nowadays. But the danger of distractions is that they pull your focus away from what's truly important and worth your time and energy. The key to leading a healthy, focused life is to deal with your distractions. And that is exactly what Pastor John is going to teach us how to do today. Following this message, you'll have the opportunity to pray with some of the people in your group and then go deeper into the topic together with some discussion questions we provided for you online at alcclife.org. So sit back, relax, and get ready for home groups. Hello everybody and welcome to Home Groups. It is great to have you with us as we study the Word of God together for the month of March. Now this is a really special home group because today is March 1st and it begins a season that's celebrated by Christians all over the world. Roman Catholics, Orthodox Christians, many Protestant Christians, even Evangelicals. It's a season called Lent, a period of time where Christians pull away from certain distractions in their life to focus on Jesus and their walk with Him. And as a congregation, we're going to be taking a journey together between today and Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday in the month of April. We're gonna to together set aside distractions and focus on God's Word and focus on our relationship with Him. And you watch and see the power of the Holy Spirit that's gonna come in your life and in our church as we take time to really focus on the Lord. I wanna to talk to you today about something that is absolutely essential to being effective in this world, whether it's in your marriage, it's in your job, it's in your home, and certainly when it has to do with your destiny, your future, and the things that God's called you to do as a person. You see, you have a purpose in this world. God puts you down here for a reason. And if you're gonna accomplish that purpose, if you're gonna reach your potential and become really effective in your life and living, then you're going to have to deal with this very important topic, and that is dealing with distractions. Distractions are everywhere, and we know it. There are distractions happening right now, wherever you're sitting, in homes or watching on television, watching on your mobile device. There are all kinds of voices and things around you that will try to pull your attention away from the things that we're doing right now. And that isn't just true when it comes to trying to learn something or go to church or hear some message or teaching. It's true in everything we do. We've learned to multitask. We've learned to uh, have many things going at once. And our brains have actually sort of become acclimated to all of the different voices. The problem with the, that kind of thinking and that kind of living is that distractions remove from us our real effectiveness. It distances us from our ability to really experience peace and joy in the moment by constantly pulling our attention away from what's in front of us right now to other things, whether things in the future, or things in the past, things that have to do with other people or what they're thinking and saying, all things that may need our attention at different times. But when you're focused on so many things or trying to focus on multiple things at the same time, you lose your effectiveness. And I want you to see that focus is an essential quality for Christian growth and maturity. In fact, the only way we can really be effective and powerful in God is if we learn to live a life that's focused on Him first. And that means we've got to deal with distractions. Now, I want to teach you from the Word of God right now, and if you have your Bible with you, I want you to open it to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. And at the end of the Gospel of Luke, there's a story that Jesus tells about him teaching and ministering. Now, remember this. The way that God causes all of us to grow, the way that we reach our potential in God and in our walk with Him is through His Word, His Spirit, and a relationship with others in the local church. Those are the three rivers of spiritual growth and development. And the most important river, the first river, is the Word of God. When Jesus came into this world, He came and brought a message. If you look through the four Gospels, you'll find that the majority of what Jesus did was teach. In fact, He put His teaching ministry ahead of His preaching ministry. Preaching is kind of proclaiming something. Teaching is explaining. Jesus was a teacher, and he taught the scriptures, the word of God. 
Even the things that Jesus said were scripture. They were recorded for us to enjoy and for us to grow from. Jesus said that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's the way we're supposed to live is from the word of God. And so when Jesus was teaching and ministering, it was essential that everyone focus on what he was saying. But in this particular uh, story, we find that Jesus was in the home of some very close friends of his, Mary and Martha. And the Bible says in verse 38, now what happened as they went, they entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word or heard his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but Mary has chosen the good part and it will not be taken away from her. This story is filled with information about the importance of listening to Jesus and removing distractions. First of all, let's take a look at what happened. Jesus enters into this home and he later became very close to Mary and Martha. This is probably his first encounter with these two women, these two sisters who became dear friends of his. Mary and Martha also had a brother named Lazarus that you might remember Jesus raised him from the dead towards the end of his ministry. They were very close. In fact, after this, Jesus often stayed in their home. So this was his first encounter with these two women who were beginning to follow Jesus. Now, Mary and Martha both cared about Jesus. They both wanted him to use their home as a, as a platform to teach his word. And Jesus is standing there teaching. We know that there were people present. And so Mary is sitting on the front row, so to speak, and she is listening to every word that Jesus said. In fact, the Gospel of Luke puts it this way, she sat at his feet and listened to his word. She was listening to him, looking up at everything Jesus said. But Martha, it says, was encumbered about with much serving or distracted. The Greek word that's used here for distracted is the word perispeo. It's two words, and I just want to give them to you real quick. First of all, the word peri. It's where we get the word periscope. It's a device that a submarine uses to go up out of the water and to turn 360 degrees to look all the way around. So peri means to go around. And then we have this word speo, which basically means to draw out or to pull away, to pull away from something. You put these words together and it means to be drawn away and to be drawn in a circle. Basically, this word means to be distracted because you're drawn away from something and you start looking all around at everything else except the thing you're supposed to be looking at. And isn't that the way distractions are? They pull our attention away from something that's important to other things that may be important, but are keeping us from really getting what we need to get from that first priority that we've been concentrating and focusing on. Distractions take away our attention. And I wanna to talk to you about what distraction does. There's at least six things that are revealed here in the Bible that distractions do to you and I. Number one, distractions drain our energy and weaken our power. They drain our energy. You know, we have a, all kinds of services that go into our home, whether they're water lines, and we have power lines, we have often cable and uh, you know, different sorts of uh, electronic devices that draw power and energy and communication from the outside world into our home. And you know, if we have too many things pulling away from that main line, then the power or the energy that's coming is diminished. You know that if you're running your sink and you also are running your garden hose and someone's drawing a bath and you've got the uh, dishwasher or you've got the washing machine on, what happens to that, that stream of water? It's very, very weak. In fact, one of the ways that you can know that you have water running is because the stream is diminished in its energy and power. And the only way to get that energy back and to get that stream strong 
uh, is to turn off the things that are drawing off the energy and the power. The same thing is true with cable television. You know, if you have a cable coming into your house and it's cutting out a lot and the picture is pixelating, it's because, well, for one reason or another, something is draining energy away. You see, you can have things that are pulling away your energy and pulling away your focus and your strength, and you may not even realize that it's happening. That's why we've all got to make sure from time to time that we are removing the things that are pulling us away. Take away some of the things in our life. And they're not always bad things. They're just things that we can't all run at once. The reality is you can't run the dishwasher, both bathtubs, uh, you know, the laundry, um, and, and run the garden hose and sprinkle the front lawn and the back lawn. You can't do all that. Fill up the pool. You can't do it all at once. You just can't. And if you try to, it's going to be so slow. The clothes aren't going to be very clean. The pool is going to take forever to fill. You're not going to be able to get it done because you're trying to do too many things with the same amount of energy. And listen, I want you to know something. God is limitless in energy. He's the only one. You, me, everybody around you right now in home group, you are a limited resource being. You only have so many hours in a day. You only have so many days in a week, only so many months, only so many years. And the other thing is we all have a firm but unknown expiration date. None of us know how long we're gonna be on this planet. So time is limited and a little bit of an unknown quantity. We can't do everything because we only have so much time. We have to sleep. We have to, we have to love our families. There are things that we have to do. And if we try to do too many things, well, we won't really have the energy to do the most important things well. There's another thing that distractions do in our lives, and that is distractions decrease your speed and slow your progress. Just as I said a moment ago, when you're distracted, you're doing so many things and you're so spread out in your attention that your ability to move forward at a pace that is satisfactory is diminished. You just can't, and you know, one of the ways you know that you have too many distractions in your life is if your speed of producing quality is going down. And by the way, you may still be doing a lot of things, but I'm telling you right now, even if you're producing them by the right deadlines, if it's not the speed of the production that's slowing down, the quality will slow down. You will not have the same level of quality because too many distractions slow our progress. Number three, distractions distort our perception of what's important, our idea of what's important. You know, when a person is very distracted and they have a lot of things running in their mind and things pulling on them all the time, then often what we end up doing, this is just the way the brain works, we tend to focus on the thing that is the most loud or the most annoying, but not necessarily the thing that's the most important. Sometimes the most important thing is not the thing that's making the most noise. And when you are at peace, and when you have your energy stores full, and when you're really centered and focused, it's easier to make right decisions about what's important. But when you are highly stressed, and your attention is all over the place, very often you'll make wrong decisions about what's important, the priorities in life, because your, your distractions are causing you to not have the concentration to think clearly and make decisions. And you know exactly what I'm saying because we've all been there, right? And I'll tell you another thing. One of the worst things you can do is when you're highly distracted and you are highly stressed and, and you are just having to make a lot of decisions quickly is if you have to make really important decisions, I, I'm just telling you, it's better to remove a few distractions, get some rest, get some peace, and make the most important decisions from a place of peace, not a place of stress, and high distraction. You most almost always will regret decisions you make when you're highly distracted. Now, there's another thing that's very, very powerful that distractions do to us. And that's the fourth thing, they diminish our ability to hear. Jesus was speaking and Mary was focused. Martha was, well, paraspaeo. She was drawn away and running around. And notice what she was caring about was important. She was caring about the guests. She was uh, making sure that everybody had something to drink, no doubt. She was uh, carrying the, the plates of, of the appetizers to people. She was making sure that, you know, she was running around focused on serving, serving 
everybody that was there, maybe getting a meal ready for after the message was finished. Uh, but the point is, Martha is running around taking care of things that are important to her because she's concerned about, and I'm gonna suggest this, she's more concerned about what people will think of her and her hospitality and her home and her serving skills than she is about what Jesus is saying at that moment. And you might say, well, somebody's gotta take care of these things. Absolutely. But I'm gonna say this to you. When Jesus is speaking and his word is going forth, the most important thing that exists is Jesus speaking and his word going forth. And you have to lay aside the important priorities of your home, of, of you know, your kids, of all the things, your job. There is a time you have to lay those things aside and you have to focus on what Jesus is saying. Because I'm gonna tell you, if you miss what Jesus is saying, you're not gonna have the wisdom or the, the spiritual insight to know how to manage your home, your kids, your relationship with your husband or your job. Distractions diminish your ability to hear God. And I'm gonna say something to you. The most important quality you have is your capacity to perceive God's voice. If you are too busy to read the Bible, but you're spending even three hours a week on social media or watching passively watching television, you are choosing unnecessary entertainment over a necessary thing that Jesus said, you must live by the words that proceed out of the mouth of God. The word of God is your most important priority. We've all been there. I don't have time to go to the gym. Add up the amount of time you spend passively entertained or watching things that don't just bring worries and cares into your life, but don't produce any results. Add it up. Most of the time, what we need is not more time. We need to make decisions about what we're doing with our time. Now, there's just two more things real quick I wanna say about distractions from this story. Number five, distractions dilute your impact. The simple fact is your ability to make an impact on the job, to make an impact on your husband or wife, to have a real meaningful, impactful love relationship. Your ability to make an impact as a parent, to be there for your kids, to teach them when they need to be listening. Your ability to make an impact in your job, in the world. You know, I hear people all the time, I just want my life to count, I wanna make an impact. But they're so busy, distracted, with so many things that aren't necessary, they don't have any time to really master the skills they need to master to become excellent at their business or their art or their marriage or their parenting. Or how about being a Christian? I attend a church, I'm a member of a church, but do you go? Is it important enough to you that you go every week to hear the word of God? Hey, listen, if we believe that in this building, in church, when we, when we come together, the presence of God is there in worship and God is speaking to us by his spirit through worship and through the ministry of the word, if we believe that, and by the way, if we don't believe that, what is this all about? If we really believe that, it ought to be a priority. In other words, it, if we're choosing to go to movies and watch Netflix, but we don't have time to go to church to hear the word of God, we are making decisions about what's important. And those decisions, you can't make those choices and then expect the results that only come from a heart and mind that is centered on Jesus, putting Christ first and focused on his word. And you know, I know, I feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit right now. I know you're feeling it too. I'm gonna say something to you. This world today in this country is so filled with pleasure and choices and options. And we all celebrate our options and we all love our freedoms, but we are using our freedom to fill our lives with unprofitable things, not even necessarily evil things, just too much stuff to really live a centered, peaceful life. Less is more. My wife has a saying and I love it. And some of you sitting in home group right now need to hear it. And that saying is this, less words, more impact. Number six, there's just a sixth principle I wanna give you about distractions from the story. Distractions ultimately disturb your sense of peace. It disturbs your peace. When you're distracted, you're not in a peaceful place. You're not, and by the way, God wants you to live in peace. He wants you to be able to live 
even when everything around you is falling apart, you're not falling apart. Matthew tells a story of Jesus sending his disciples across the Sea of Galilee in a boat. And he said, I'll meet you on the other side. And then the Bible says a great storm began to arise on the Sea of Galilee. And as the disciples were uh, in the boat, all of a sudden they looked out and they saw Jesus walking across the water, walking on the water. And as soon as they saw this, they were overwhelmed with this experience. Here's Jesus walking on the water. And what's amazing is Peter cried out to Jesus. And it says in verse 28, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. In other words, if that's really you walking on the water, I want to do it too. I want to have the same power you do. I want to walk on water, but I can't do it unless your word comes to me. You've got to say, come. I can't do it on my own. I know I can't. I need the word because listen, the word of God is the foundation of a successful life. So Jesus cries out to Peter, one word, come. The Bible says that immediately Peter uh, came down out of the boat and began walking on the water to Jesus. But notice the Bible says in verse 30 that when Peter saw the wind was boisterous, he became afraid. What does that mean? He saw the wind. So Peter, who was looking at Jesus, now began to look at the circumstances. He began to hear the wind and he drew his attention away from Jesus and that wind and those waves were a distraction. It was noisy, it was scary if you focus on it. And as soon as Peter saw the natural circumstances, the Bible says he became afraid and the next words are so powerful and beginning to sink. That's what happens when you get distracted. You become afraid and you start, actually, you will always move in the direction of what you're looking at. And I'm sure that as Peter looked away from Jesus, he began to walk towards the thing that he was afraid of. And he began to sink. You start going down. And as he began to sink, he had enough smarts to cry out. And he said, Lord, save me. And I love it. When we get in trouble, we say, Lord, save me from the circumstances. But a lot of times we're asking the Lord to save us from circumstances that are causing us to be afraid because we're focusing on those things. And Jesus is good. He came and delivered him. It says immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. Praise God. Not the end of the story. And then Jesus said, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The word doubt here means to be two-minded, to have two opinions about something, which causes you to lose confidence. His focus was not just on Jesus. Now he was looking at something else. And that second thing was the distraction that caused him to begin to lose his power over the circumstances of life and lose his attention on Jesus. So when we go back to this powerful story about Mary and Martha, we can see that distractions disturb your sense of peace. I'm gonna say this to you. Anything in your life right now, even if it's a good thing, that when it disturbs your peace, your spiritual sense of tranquility, you need to remove it. If it's a news watching habit, if it's a commenting habit, if it's going on social media and giving your opinion or reading everybody's opinion, but it causes you to not, be, to not feel loving, to not feel peaceful, to feel afraid, I'm gonna tell you, you need to remove it from your life, at least for a season. You need to set it aside. Do you want to have peace? Do you want to have joy? Do you want to be an effective believer? Do you want your life to count? Do you want the word to be powerful in your life? Do you want to be energized? Do you want to make progress at a good pace? Do you want to have the right priorities that are folk working in your life? Do you want to be able to hear God when he speaks? Do you want to make an impact? Do you want to have peace? If the answer is yes, you are going to have to do what Jesus said. You're going to have to deal with your distractions. And here's what Jesus said to Martha. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but Mary has chosen the good thing and it will not be taken from her. In other words, Jesus didn't say, I'm going to remove your distractions for you. He said, no, nope, you go ahead. You make a choice about what you're going to focus on. But Mary made a choice, which is, this is so important. Distractions are a choice. They're a choice of attention. And you and I are responsible for what we give our attention to.
what we allow to play on the screen of our minds, what we allow to play before our eyes, the people we spend time with, the people we listen to, whether we're present in a conversation or checking the latest news update. Now I have a challenge that we're going to take together as a church community. As I said a little earlier, today is what the traditional church calls uh, the Lenten season. And the Lenten season is simply a period of time that Christians from all different backgrounds remember the time that Jesus pulled away from his life and went into the wilderness to face temptation and he fasted. He fasted people, he fasted, uh, he fasted uh, food, and he focused on God and he prayed. And during that period of time, he did battle with the enemy. And the Bible says after those 40 days, Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit to Galilee and began his ministry. You see, it was a time of Jesus getting focused on God, getting focused on the real enemies that he had to face and getting victory. And when he went through that period of time, he came out powerful. So over the next 40 days, starting today, I want to take all of us on a spiritual journey. Actually, it's going to be about 45 days. We're going to go from today until Good Friday, April 14th. And over the next 45 days, here's what I'm asking you to do. And again, you don't have to do it, but I want you to take this challenge and pray about it. Number one, I'm going to ask you to take time every day with God. And we're going to be reading through the Bible. We're going to be reading the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of John, one chapter a day. Starting today, you could begin tonight before you go to bed by reading the first chapter, the Gospel of Luke. And we're going to read one chapter a day until we get to Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. We'll have some materials online that will help you to remember where you are in your reading and in your time of prayer. And as you read the life of Jesus, Luke will tell you about the natural life of Jesus, what happened from the human standpoint. John will tell you about the life of Jesus from God's standpoint. And between those two gospels, you'll get the full story of Jesus' life. And as you study and read the word of God, be undistracted, put things aside and let him speak to you. The second part of this challenge is this. I wanna ask you to pick something in your life that is a distraction that is pulling away your energy, that's doing the things we talked about and set it aside for a period of time. If you're willing, set it aside for the next 40, 45 days until we get to Good Friday. If you can't do it for that period of time, do it for a week or two weeks. The longer you can go towards 40 days, the more effective this challenge will be. And during this period of time, I want you to set aside or put out of your life something that it may not be evil, it's just a distraction. It's just a distraction. Now you can't set aside things that, you, that are important, like, like your relationship with your spouse or your kids, your job, you have to do those things, but perhaps you can set aside something else. For example, a lot of folks set aside a meal. They'll set aside one meal a day and during that time, they'll read the Bible and they'll pray. Or you can fast, uh, you can fast a kind of food. Maybe you've just been eating way too much sugar. Your body's not in balance. And so you're gonna set that aside for 45 days. You're not gonna have any sugar. You're just gonna eat this for 45 days. Maybe you need to detox your body. You can use it to move out of your diet anything that the Lord puts in your heart you need to remove. Set it aside and spend, this is the key, it's not just getting rid of that, it's spending time sitting at his feet and hearing his word. Over the next 45 days, I wanna challenge you not only to read a chapter in the Bible a day and to spend some time talking to God, setting aside a distraction, but I wanna challenge you to make church a priority. Get in church every day. Listen to the teaching of God's word. This coming Sunday, I'm planning on teaching on the book of Romans. Chapter nine, we're gonna be talking about God's purposes for his covenant people, Israel. And over the next season, we're gonna be going deep into the word of God. On Wednesday nights, over this next period of time, we're gonna be coming to church and hearing about how to live the spirit-empowered, spirit-filled life. We're gonna spend time worshiping, praying, and hearing from God. And this Saturday is First Saturday Prayer. I wanna encourage you to come to First Saturday Prayer at nine o'clock this Saturday morning and pray with us. We only have this one big prayer event a month, once a month, the first Saturday of the month. If you're able to, come and be with us. But put God, put church, put spiritual things first. If you haven't been tithing, if you haven't been giving to God, 
This is your chance. Make a decision. I'm going to be a 100% faithful tither. I'm going to put God first in my finances. Because the Bible says, God knows where your heart is by knowing where your money is. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also, Jesus said. If your treasure isn't going into the things of God, to the kingdom of God, to the church of God, then you can't say that you value it. Put God first. Take this challenge and see what God will do in your life. You're gonna come back from this with the power of the Holy Spirit. We as a people, you as an individual, your family and our church is gonna be stronger. You're gonna be tempted. You're gonna have some distractions. Stay focused on Jesus. Don't let the wind or the waves, the devil, or even the busyness of priorities to distract you from this time you're setting aside for Jesus every day and in church once a week. I hope you've been blessed by this message. Now. We're gonna move into home group time. And we're gonna have some discussions and what I'd like you to do is out of the energy of what we've just talked about, I want you to go around in a circle and talk about what this means to you. What is a distraction in your life right now that's keeping you from being the powerful, impactful, and effective person you could be? Talk about that. And then if you're willing, think about and ask one another, what is something you believe you're supposed to give up or set aside a distraction you're supposed to set aside in your life. Have a conversation about these things and then pray for one another that God will strengthen you and take this journey together. You may as a home group wanna to read together the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. You could do that if you wanted to. Let's begin right now and see what God is gonna do in our church and in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Let me take a minute and pray for you. Just close your eyes right now. If you're in a circle, just join hands. If you're close to next to somebody, just join hands with them and let's believe God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word of God. You said we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of your mouth. Father, we make you and your son Jesus and his word a priority in our lives. We restore our commitment to putting the word first ahead of everything else. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your power and your spirit would come upon everyone that's watching this home group video right now. I pray, Father, that you would help them in the mighty name of Jesus to identify the distractions in their life that you want them to set aside so they can become more powerful, they can hear more clearly, and Father, they can enjoy their life with more peace. Lord, show us what it is. And together, as we pray for one another and we commit together to this journey, I thank you, Father, that you will anoint us and help us and bring us the victory. We give you praise for these things in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Take some time to talk, pray for each other, and watch and see what God is about to do in your home group, in your life, and in this church, starting right now.